Hello everyone. Hi, I'm Miss Benita. And if you are just joining us for the first time, we're glad you're here. And like you, I'm at home right now and Ruby's keeping me company. Actually, she's keeping warm. But we've been thinking, surely somewhere today, someone is celebrating their birthday. If it is your birthday today, happy birthday. And if it's a family member's birthday or someone you know close by, wish them a happy day today. All right, so we are working on ecosystem restoration. And the problem we're exploring is that a forested area in the Costa Rican rainforest isn't thriving. The jaguars and sloths there are not growing and thriving. And we wanna find out why. If you're following along in the packet, we will be using pages five through eight. And if you don't have the packet, that's okay. You can just use paper that you find around the house. Let's get started. Well, actually, before we get started, let's review. Lesson three's wrap. We looked at the book, Matter Makes It All Up, and we wanted to find out how animals grow. We learned from the book and the reading that thing, everything is made up of matter and that all matter is made up of molecules and atoms that are too small to be seen. We took these ideas together and we synthesized them. We knitted these ideas together. We learned that animals are made of matter. They grow by eating food, which is also made of matter. So this video has three activities. The first video, we will be looking at the evidence on how animals grow. The question we're investigating is, how do animals grow? We know that animals are made of matter and matter is made of molecules. Next, we need to figure out where animals get the molecules they need to grow. To help us think more about this, we'll watch a video of some animals in their environment. We will observe otters in their environment. Do you know what an otter is? Well, they're pretty cool. Even though otters do not live in the Costa Rican rainforest, we will go ahead and observe their actions and we will apply what we've learned to the animals that we are studying. As we watch, pay attention to what the animals are doing and think about where the animals might be getting the molecules they need to grow. So you can see there's two otters here along the water. They're considered to be very social animals. They like to be together. They're not solitary like some other animals. I wonder what they're doing here. Yes, these otters are swimmers. We find them in rivers, ponds, and even in the oceans. These are river otters. They like to swim on their, float on their backs, have sharp nails. Let's see what they're up to here. They're swimming underwater. They're doing, oh, that's fish. Those air bubbles right there. Where do you think those air bubbles are coming from? If you're watching with a family member, this is a good time to talk about what you're seeing, what you're observing. Oh, what's happening here? Look at those sharp teeth. And look how it's using its paws. It's eating. It's like a fish. Some more underwater action here. Remember, we're observing what they're doing. More air bubbles. Here's another scene. They're floating on their back. It's like they're eating again. Making our observations here. Good swimmers and strong tail. Back feet. Here's 
a scene along the waterfront. There's three of them. What's going on here? Are they fighting? Are they playing? Hmm. Looks like we're not going to have to infer either one of those things are happening, right? More otters swimming. It's pretty common to see them together like this. One's dark and one's light in color. I wonder why that is. There we go. Now we've been using this word environment. Let's take a pause and think about this word. All the living and non-living things in an area. When we read the book, we saw uh, these different pieces of the environment in the Florida Everglades. We had the cypress tree, we had the alligator, heron, and rocks all make up the environment in the Florida Everglades. Now, if you and your family's culture define living and non-living differently, then this would be a great opportunity for you to talk about those differences. If you have your packet, we'll start on page five. We'll work together to develop a claim about how animals grow, and we can use what we read and observed as evidence. Hold on a second. We've got a couple words here that I think need explaining. What do you think? Let's start with evidence. Information that supports an answer to a question. We read this book to gather evidence on how animals grow. A claim is a proposed answer to a question. Let's take a look at this one. In the book on page nine, all the new bone, muscle, blood, and skin doesn't just appear from nothing. I think that's a double negative. Anyway, since an animal is made of matter, when it grows, it needs to add more matter to its bones, muscles, and other parts. That, that's how animals grow. Let's take a closer look at this. Since an animal is made up of matter, when it grows, it adds more matter to its bones, muscles, and other parts. This is evidence that helps us uh, make a claim to the question, how do animals grow? So back on page five, we can now work together to develop a claim on how animals grow, and we can use what we read and observed as evidence. What were the otters doing in the video? Based on what you observed, what are your ideas about how otters grow their bodies? Let's think about this. Eating, moving, swimming, playing, are those some of the things they, we observed? Yes. By eating fish, by getting matter from food. That's how otters grow their bodies. Let's take a look at the pages 7, 10, and 11. What evidence did you find as you read? Based on your evidence, what claims can you make about how animals grow? Let's start here, a claim. We can all agree on this one. Animals grow by eating to add molecules to their bodies. Now we'll record the evidence that you found to support your claim. And again, any piece of paper will do if you don't have the packet. The video shows molecules going into the otter's bodies through eating. Remember that fish is chomping at it? What about the book? What evidence can we gather from the book? The book describes how animals eat, break down food molecules inside their bodies and add molecules to their bodies in order to grow. If these are some of the ideas that you've gathered, write it down in the evidence section. That'll help support the claim that animals grow by eating to add molecules to their bodies. All right, the second activity, we're gonna do more showing how animals grow. Here's a different way to think about how animals grow. Let's do a representation. If we were in a classroom, we would have these cubes readily available, right? So let's take a look at this image. The stack of seven cubes represents an otter. 
The stack of three cubes represents a fish. Why do you think the otter and fish are made out of the same thing, these blue cubes? Why does the otter have more cubes than the fish? So using items round around your home, how will you show how animals grow? What would the otter need to do so it can grow? You can use page six of your packet and this is a great opportunity to include your family in uh, showing how animals grow. Remember to talk about molecules. Now, scientists often revise their thinking as they gather new evidence. Let's review some ideas from the book again and talk about how they might help us revise our thinking. On page 10, the text says, inside the animal's body, the food molecules are broken down and used to build new molecules. How can you show that? Think about the household items you picked out to represent the otter and the fish. And on page 10, the text says, not all the matter that an animal eats gets added to the animal's body. How is this matter used? Where does it go? How can you show that? Discuss the ways you could revise your drawing and decide on revisions. Then draw your revised thinking in the box. All right, at any time, you can pause this video and work on the questions that we've been asking, okay? Our last activity, though, is how animals use food molecules. We know where animals get the food molecules they need for growth, from the body molecules of the plants and animals they eat. What do animals do with the molecules they get from their food? Step by step, we're getting closer to this. We're going to use a digital sim to continue exploring matter in ecosystems. Before we get started, let's review a few features of the sim. Here we go. Let's review how we use the These matter cubes represent the matter that makes up each organism. Let's slow down this activity by selecting 0.5 times. This means it will run at half speed. You can use this button to pause. Then, press the button down through the ecosystem once again. As we explore the sim, you will focus on how animals use food molecules. Observe what, an what happens when animals in the sim eat. You can use this sheet as you observe the sim. It'll help you to figure out how animals use food matter. There are two questions here to, be, to consider while you're watching the video. How can you tell if an animal is growing and what happens to food matter after an animal eats? Hi, if you're following along on the set, otherwise you have the video running and I'm showing you the sim. Watch what happens to the different piles in each of the organisms in this ecosystem. Pause the sim and come back to the video. Did you figure out how animals use food matter? All right, make sure you jot down some of your ideas. 
but I want to take a quick pause here. I have a capture screen capture here. Let's do some stop motion replay. What did you observe? As the rabbits eat the plants, they digest the food. The plant matter is food, right? The food matter becomes energy and body matter. The rabbits use the energy to move and the body matter keeps the plants growing and thriving. How did you answer the two questions? Please share with a family member. Anytime, you can pause the video. All right, it's a wrap. Let's review what we've learned and done today. We use the book to gather evidence to support our claim that animals grow by eating and adding molecules to their bodies. We use the items around the house to show how an otter grows when it eats a fish. And we use the sim to show us that sometimes food matter is used to build the body of the animal so it can grow. Other times, the food matter is broken down and energy is released. Thank you for spending your time with me today. And the next time, we meet, we'll continue to explore why the jaguars and the sloths are not thriving in our reforested area in the Costa Rican rainforest. Bye for now.